What's up YouTube? This is John back with another episode of Engineering Awesome and today I want to show you guys a couple of the modifications that I've made to the CNC plasma, go over a few of the lessons learned and talk a lot about making money with a CNC plasma. Let's get right to it. go ahead and keep this video pretty short. I'm not gonna lie, it is really cold out here. I shut the heater off just so that I could do this video, but I did want to show you guys a couple of things that I've changed. One of the biggest modifications that I've made is going from a ball screw, which as most of you guys know, if you've been paying attention to the build log, were cheap Chinese ball screws. I have since switched over to running a rack and pinion system. Uh, which let me take the linear rail, put it on top of this, and then mount the, the rack and pinion right next to it. Now, the reason why that's nice, which was actually pointed out by a viewer, I knew it as well, but the uh, bearing surface is actually in this way vertical, which means that it won't hold as much dirt. Now, we'll still hold dirt here, but uh, on, on this axis, we're good. Now, one thing that I really ran into with the ball screws was that at about this point in the travel and then this point in the travel, I really had a big issue with it binding. Uh, so the rack and pinion totally eliminated that because I've got a tensioning system. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a, a little picture of that just so that you can kind of get an idea, but I designed this and cut it myself. I do plan to release those files and, and potentially sell them, uh, you know, if somebody is unable to cut it themselves I don't mind cutting it uh, is basically what I'm getting at but I made this at a quarter inch plate I think it's probably possible to make that a 10 gauge even uh, it doesn't have to be super thick but that's something that if you guys are interested in purchasing we can discuss then now the one of the best changes other than the rack and pinion was the mechanized torch that was a really huge uh, improvement now it uses the same consumables that you're able to use with a, a typical razor cut 45 uh, hand torch. Um, I have switched over in this torch to using the Italian made uh, consumables from Tecmo, if I'm not mistaken. Right now I get mine from Plasmadyne and that's where I got the torch from. I'm hoping Gamble's Garage will start carrying those for me uh, and then I can plug him some more because he has helped me a ton with this. Now this torch was not really designed to go on this but Plasmadyne sells a Euro connector and you're actually able to uh, make it work for it pretty easily. I also called the guy and he really helped me understand what I needed to do and sent me a couple of parts uh, for free uh, after he realized what I was doing with it. Uh, he also helped me with some consumables on it, uh, figuring out what I needed and sent me a variety of them. I tested them all and found that the 1.1 millimeter, the 60 amp consumables with the standard blowback style uh, electrode, those have worked amazing. Uh, the tip that I'm on right now, or the nozzle, I cut a four foot by four foot sheet of quarter inch plate. I've cut quite a few uh, bottle openers out of 10 gauge and I cut an entire sheet of leaves for a customer. Uh, out of 16 gauge, all on the, the exact same consumables. So, incredibly impressed with that. The hand torch, I was just blowing through them like they were nothing, but uh, to be fair to that torch, I never tried the Tecmo consumables. So, if you guys are struggling, then that is definitely something I recommend trying. Now, some of the lessons learned on this, this setup, uh, biggest thing, stay away from the ball screws in my opinion. Uh, I was not able to get them to work uh, because I couldn't mill any of this. Uh, I'm not going to pay somebody to mill this down. That's just too expensive. The rack and pinion with uh, the self-tensioning system makes it so that if this is misaligned by a little bit on that end or here or even in the middle, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about it much. So the rack and pinion I feel is the way to go. Now, one thing that I don't like is definitely this uh, open builds z-axis. I've really struggled a lot with getting it perfect. Right now I don't really have any place. I decide there, there's a little bit of wobble but not much. 
I had to tighten it so much that the bearings actually bind, and so when that moves up and down, you can hear a, a clicking every once in a while, and it is not the floating head. So that's that's been a real pain. Uh, another thing, now it does work, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that a win and not worry about it. Another thing, I've got this uh, right here, which is a floating head that I got off of eBay from a guy. I had to remove one of the springs in it because it was just too heavy. Uh, there's also some play in it. Uh, I don't like where the switch is mounted either. I used socketed cap screws, ended up having to remove one because it was just, the, the switch would hit it and it was unreliable. So when I removed that, it became a lot more reliable. What that tells me though, is that this is probably not repeating in the same place every time. So when I come down and do the probe sequence, you know, maybe it's 163, which I think is what I've got it set in mock, and then maybe the next time it's 173. So that is really not great. So next up on the upgrade list is, is this. I will be going to Highwind Rails on the Z axis, and actually I'm pretty excited to try it, but I'm gonna do my own floating head with the Highwind Rails as well. Now, one of the biggest things that people do or why they build these is to make money. So I kind of wanted to share some of my experience with actually building a system like this to make money or that being at least a byproduct because I built this to learn about it. Uh, I built it as a, a great project to teach myself to weld and to learn more about how these systems work and how I could improve them. So I, don't, I haven't made a ton with it, but basically, I have started getting a lot of little jobs that are keeping me incredibly busy just on word of mouth alone. So I show people what I've done, even for the holidays. I, uh, For Halloween, I cut out some pumpkins and took those into work. I, I cut about six out of some scrap metal. As you can see here, I've got some loaded up. I'm probably going to cut some Christmas signs on it. Uh, and I'll cut more than I did of the pumpkins because that ended up generating my very first paid work on it. I had a guy that wanted me to make him a sign for his cattle farm. That was pretty cool. So uh, from there, I've gotten orders for little signs. Uh, I've got a four foot by five foot sheet of leaves I've cut. Uh, I got an order for six of the uh, Circle Game bottle openers. So I cut 12 and I've been playing with those and giving them to friends uh, but doing that kind of little thing where it's like hey I made this bottle opener would you like one and then people kind of look at it and say, oh that's, that's pretty neat you know I, I like this Do you think you could make me something it's like yeah but you got to make sure that you charge for it the first piece you know maybe it's that big by that wide no big deal that is uh, kind of your marketing budget but when you actually start making things, you gotta be careful not to do it at cost or for friends, you really shouldn't do it at cost because these consumables and uh, the machine itself, they're pretty pricey. So that's, that's kind of my suggestion there. Now, with this plasma, uh, I'm really starting to see some of the potential uh, for making money with it. So. I think that this coming year I'm really going to hit it hard. I used it extensively on the last automation build, which is one of the big reasons why I haven't been making uh, videos. I had a small Fanuc LR Mate uh, in the garage, I'll go ahead and show a picture up there of, uh, of it and then some of the pieces that I actually burned out using this table. That was an eye opener. I realized just how useful this machine could be in the side work that I do. So uh, I did a video on the uh, modeling of that uh, little cell and we actually installed it and we were able to help them achieve uh, their goal of making more parts than they ever had in 20 years and uh, we just put it in last week so hopefully we're able to do that reliably as well. Uh, we didn't really have any issues with it but only time will tell. Uh, it should no doubt be more reliable than what they did. But anyway, let's get back to it. Um, this was an invaluable tool during that entire project. I used it to brace the fence. I burned out a, a panel that we mounted the pendant on and 
that also had the logo in it, as, as did the, the mounts for the fence that, that kept it from shaking. Uh, and then I also burnt out a, an air regulator uh, mount, and we've also decided that for future projects, when we do guards, we will use metal and not plastic, and we will burn them out here. So this is gonna be an awesome tool for everything else that I do, and I'm really looking forward to some of the potential for generating additional business. So hopefully that helps you guys make a decision on if you want to build one. Now my plans for the future are definitely going to be doing a video on a spray booth for powder coating. Uh, I've got it all drawn up on a piece of paper. So that's going to be my build for hopefully this week. And uh, then after that, I've already ordered a PID controller. I'm going to be ordering the elements and I'm going to be building a powder coat of it. Really excited about that. We'll see how it goes. Just behind the camera right now is my very first welding table. So I'm excited to show that. I made it on a quarter inch plate, cut it all on here. Man, it turned out awesome. So if there ends up being interest in that, I don't mind releasing the file for that either. I've also got a grinder rack that I just put on it that turned out amazing. So I'm gonna be releasing that file as well. So if you guys uh, enjoyed this video, make sure that you give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment down below let me know what you're interested in ask me questions about this uh, just anything you guys need and uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys next time on engineering awesome